We're so excited to welcome one of Hollywood's brightest creative talents, the screenwriter behind this summer's blockbuster, the new Fast and the Furious movie, Fast Five. Chris Morgan, thanks for Hi. joining us. Hi, Chris. Now, Chris, these Fast and the Furious movies are just getting bigger and better. So when you sat down to write this installment, were there certain elements you wanted to include? I want the cars to drive fast and then some of them explode. Oh, that sounds so great. Now, I believe we have a clip to show our audience at home. Can you set the clip up for us, Chris? Uh-huh. The car went out of the train, and then there's a hole in the train. Uh -huh. And then the, the car brought the box, then the police went after that, then the, the, the box hit the car, then, and then it crashed into the ocean. Whoa! <laughs> Looks like this movie never slows and down. And this time the car goes And at this another time it goes ah. oh, oh, no spoilers, no spoilers. So, Chris, one of the biggest stars in the business is in this movie, Vin Diesel. Was, what was it like working with him? He has big muscles, and in the movie he said, I thought I was done with this. Now, I understand the movie stays pretty much 100% true to your original screenplay. Yep. Wow, it's so great to have that mm. kind of a chemistry with a director. And I understand Jordana Brewster is coming back for this installment. Yeah, she's a girl, and she likes to kiss, so she doesn't play with the cars, but sometimes she does, but mostly just the boys. Now, this is one thing I really love about your movies, Chris. I mean, all the female characters are so strong. Can I take off my shoes now? Oh, sure. Like your last movie, Why? with Angelina Jolie, she is so tough. Yep, she sees a bullet and the bullet went puff around her face, but she didn't die, only had to take a bath. See, I love that. Now, before we go, Chris, I have to ask you, is there a chance we're gonna see more Fast and the Furious sequels? Yeah. Well, how many? A 600. Whoa, well, I know where I'll be every summer. Well, Chris Morgan, thanks so much for joining us here on uh, Today Now this morning. Looks like he's talking himself out. Right in all those moves. Right. Don't forget, this Friday, Fast Five premieres in theaters. And when we come back, we'll talk to an old woman who thinks it's 1958, and I'm her dead husband. Stay with us. Earlier, we talked to Jumpin' Jeff Farmer. Let's go now to that interview. Folks, there's Jumpin' Jeff Farmer. Jeff, a while back, what a match you had with Motley. Yep. Probably the hardest match I ever had in my life. But I don't like it when things aren't my, going my way. Motley Cruz, you turn the tables on me. You turn the tables in a wrong way. You've got me mad now. I've stood around, I've listened to everything you had to say. I've did everything necessary. But when you turn around and you backstab me one way or another and you treat, cheat me out of what's rightfully mine, that's when I get angry. Now I'm the one doing the challenging. I'm issuing a challenge to you, Motley Cruz. Get in the ring with me. This time, I'm going full force. Jumping Jeff Farmer. Now let's go to the ring. With all economic factors indicating the U.S. is heading for a prolonged recession, some experts are suggesting that the government should stop dumping all of our money into an enormous hole. Is it time to close the national money hole? Uh, that kind of talk is, is alarmist and irresponsible. America needs the money hole. Right. That was Driving it. truckloads of money out into the New Mexico desert and dumping it into a massive pit is one of America's greatest traditions. It's frankly, it's a national yes. now, treasure. Look, no yes. reasonable person is advocating that we are going to stop destroying money. But the American people earn that money. They have the right to decide how it should be destroyed. Well, so I you are in favor of personal money holes. Yes, people should be able to dump money into a hole in their backyard or flush it down the toilet. Let the free market decide the most efficient way of destroying My money. My father worked two jobs so he'd have money to put in the money hole, oh. and he never complained. You can't depend on thing. private money holes to destroy that money. Duncan's right. I mean, some of this money could blow away. Yes. Some of it may not be correctly buried. Birds I mean, there's too many variables. That's why the government yes. pours gasoline into the money hole and lights it on fire to make sure all the money is destroyed. I it's love just, the money it, fire. It's just like they say, you have to throw money in a hole and set it on fire to make money. Okay, but find the cheapest way to destroy that money, like shredding it up and feeding it to hogs. Tell that to the digger who's worked the every... graveyard shift for 20 years. Digging the hole is all he knows. The sheer number of shovelers that it takes to maintain but that hole. But if we're talking about it, closing it, holes, I mean, what about the soldier hole? How about, how about the energy hole? I mean, I can't believe that closing the money hole is even on the table. Don't close Why are the you money pushing hole? this pro-hole agenda? Is the money hole lobby paying you? I resent that accusation. I do not take money from special interests. And if I did, I would throw it right in the hole because I am a patriot. If you love America, you throw money in its hole.
Avengers. We can bust arms dealers all the live long day, but that up there, that's... That's the end game. How are you guys planning on beating that? Together. This is Peter Rosenthal, head film critic for The Onion. Today I'll be looking at the new film Avengers Age of Ultron, the latest in Marvel's blockbuster franchise about a team of superheroes who assemble to fight humanity's greatest threats, and a movie that suffers from far too many scenes in which things other than superheroes are visible on screen. Buildings, roads, regular people, these are not superheroes, yet they are consistently shown throughout the film, oftentimes taking up a significant portion of the frame, a problem so glaring and obvious that it frankly makes this movie difficult to watch. Picking up shortly after the first film, Age of Ultron reunites the titular Avengers, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and the Hulk in an epic battle against the insidious artificial intelligence Ultron. That's six superheroes. Six. From frame one, writer and director Joss Whedon drops the ball by overlooking glaring gaps of screen space like this room or this patch of sky that could have been vastly improved by plugging them with 10 or 20 more superheroes. 30 if you really squeeze them in. The taxi in this shot, for example, should be a superhero. All of these non-superpowered people should definitely be superheroes, some on the ground, some flying through the air. This woman should be a superhero, and this mountain should be a massive pyramid of superheroes. But sadly, the directorial missteps were obvious from the movie's opening title card, when Whedon chose not to pose numerous superheroes in such a way that their bodies spelled out the letters of Avengers Age of Ultron. Admittedly, there are several expertly choreographed combat sequences in which all the Avengers are packed tightly into the frame. However, if we freeze frame and look a bit closer, there are three empty pockets here, here, and here, which the producers could have easily filled with at least three additional superheroes. There are over 7,000 licensed Marvel superheroes out there, and every last one of them should be in this film. The X-Men? Ghost Rider, the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man? I say throw five Spider-Men in there. Dump in a bunch of Wolverines. How about all the DC characters too? Batman, Superman. There is room. Keep them coming until they blot out all the light. And the screen is literally a swarm of superheroes. So many that you can't possibly tell them apart. All I'm asking is to never have to look at anything that isn't a superhero. It's Filmmaking 101, and Joss Whedon should take note if the Avengers franchise is ever going to become the super-powered extravaganza moviegoers deserve. For The Onion's Film Standard, I'm Peter Rosenthal. <laughs>
He ate our Boston Terrier a couple of months ago. You but... couldn't have known. <sighs> yes, I know that's true. Even if I could go back, I know there's nothing I, I could have done differently. No. Maybe put a bell on the snake. But... <gasps> you know, Zach wouldn't want you to be sad. <laughs> yes, I know. It's been hard on all of us and the snake. Sure. Jaws is like a son to us. And... He misses Zach very much. You can see it in his eyes. Right. Oh, I, I just want to say to everyone watching, just love your kids every day. Because you never know when God is going to invite them up to heaven through your snake. Right. That's a great lesson. Well, if you at home would like to help uh, the Shaw family, uh, you can visit our website. There's some instructions there on how you can help defray some of Rich and Lisa's expenses, including the purchase of a much-needed therapy snake for Zach's sister, Anne, who's having some difficulty coping with the loss of her brother. Okay. Now let's go on over to... Son, what are you gonna do with your life? I'm gonna be popular on social media. No, but what are you gonna do as a career? I just told you. But how are you gonna become popular? You don't have any artistic talent, you're not creative, you're not even funny. I'm gonna take selfies. Selfies? And I'm gonna make YouTube videos that are over 10 minutes long. Videos about what? About nothing. But that's not interesting at all. So you call yourself an influencer, huh? Well, I did get 200 likes on my last selfie. Mine got 200,000. That's more than double. Teach me. I'd like you to take some selfies with our product. I think you can have a certain influence on consumers. You know I'd love to be there for your birthday, but it's just not good for my personal brand, Grandma. You keep taking selfies like this, you're gonna lose control of your thumbs. I'll never stop taking selfies. That's really dumb, but okay. Okay, I can't even have coffee with you anymore without you taking a picture of it. The people need to know what I'm drinking. We have a new product for you. It's an energy drink for kids made out of pure cocaine. I, I can't promote that. We can offer you $100,000. What is up, guys? I just discovered an amazing new energy drink. You are taking too many selfies. It is impossible to take too many selfies. I don't even recognize you anymore. You don't understand the pressure of being an influencer. Do I take a selfie with a nice coffee or a frappuccino? Do I put on sunglasses or do I not? What inspirational quote do I copy paste as the caption? I'm important. Are you tired of rhythm? Now you too can learn to display awkward, jerky dance moves when you order How to Dance Like a White Guy. You'll learn the squat, the point and squat, the double squat spin clap and point, the over the shoulder point shake and shrug, the clap point point clap point 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 clap point and squat, the hip breaker, the Caucasian clap, the point to the Lord, the cracker squirm, the Fat Rebel. The Whitey Hop. The Honky Hump. Act now and you'll receive one bonus lesson. Slow Dancing Whiteys. Don't think it'll work for you? Just check out this satisfied customer after only one lesson. Now get yourself on the dance floor, break it down like a happy homo. With your legs is shaking and your bunions aching, you look like Sonny Bono. When you hear that funky beat drop, clap your hands on one and three. Your hands are pumping and your hips are humping, you're a mean disco honky. Now How to dance like a white guy. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-555-HONKY. That's 1-800-555-HONKY. Now sport that sweater like a saltine cracker and a white turtleneck cause you ain't no slacker. 